For nearly 100 years, the Chicago District Golf Association has stood for excellence in this extraordinary game of golf. Now the CDGA's magazine comes to life on TV. Chicago District Golfer celebrates the traditions of the past while connecting with the present. It's a golf show that is sure to inform and to have a little fun along the way. For what's important in Chicago golf, it's Chicago District Golfer TV. Today, we cruise up north to play a little pure Michigan golf. We'll see the dramatic conclusion of the 62nd annual Illinois Open Championship. Plus, try to figure out this month's rule book from Bowes Creek Country Club. Club champion examines the best irons for 2011. We'll also look at the pros and cons of GPS and rangefinders. And we'll have the inspirational story that's bringing a little sunshine to many youths. Chicago District Golfer TV is presented in part by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana BMW Centers, Bowes Creek Country Club, Wilson Golf, the Bolingbrook Golf Club, and Club Champion. Hello again everyone, I'm Jill Carlson and welcome to Chicago District Golfer TV from the terrific highlands of Elgin Golf Course. You've no doubt seen or heard those pure Michigan commercials with the voice of Tim Allen. Well, we recently sent our Dave Lockhart up to the mitten, way up here, to find out if the golf says pristine as those spots suggest. The Ultimate Driving Tour is brought to you by BMW. Our first stop is to the Lakewood Shores Resort in the town of Escoda. Here you will find three distinctively different championship courses in a serene environment. The most unique and challenging layout is the Lynx Land Delight, known as the Gales. If you watch the British Open, and a lot of people really enjoy watching the British Open because it's so different, the Gales is just that. You know, you've got the meandering burns, uh, which are the streams that go throughout the course. You've got the sod face bunkers, the grassy hollows, which are just deep. Uh, low areas and uh, the double greens. It gives you the sense of being in Scotland and the coast of Scotland. Lake Huron is just about a mile away, so the wind tends to blow off the Great Lake, thus the name, the Gales. Also interesting to look at are some of the double greens. Here you see the 14th and the 11th from the side. Then check it out from the fairway on 14. It's quite a dramatic difference. Also at Lakewood Shores, you have the totally contrasting layout in Blackshire. It's Michigan's answer to the famous Pine Valley. Blackshire has some nice gentle rolls in it, but every hole is cut right through the trees. Uh, you have the sand waste areas along the fairways, tees and greens that uh, give it a different look from most courses in northern Michigan. So it's a nice, nice mix for the resort and this area. Moving west towards the center of the state is Forest Dunes Golf Club. Designed by the multi-talented Tom Weiskopf, this is a track that's part Parkland and part Lynx. Well, it's very unique. It's even unique for northern Michigan. Well, the name is perfect. Half the holes are in the forest and uh, running through the woods, and the other half are in the dunes that are wide open, uh, very uh, Lynx feel to it. It's definitely not target oriented. There's only two holes here that you don't see right in front of you. The rest, you don't even need a yardage book to play. It's uh, every hole is right in front of you and pretty self-descriptive as you're, you're going through the holes. Fast greens are the norm at this member for a day facility. It's also notable that Golf Digest thinks highly of Forest Dunes, placing it at number four in Michigan and also inside their respected list of America's 100 greatest courses. It's amazing how many people follow the America's Greatest. They'll come in here with their, their magazine and check it off and they call it their bucket list course and so we people all over the country all over the world really uh, we I just made a tea time for Belgium uh, the other day so very neat just about a half hour up the road in the town of Lewiston is the Garland Lodge and Resort here you will discover four championship courses geared for any player that evokes the feeling of pure golf there's a lot of water there's a couple creeks on the four courses, there's elevation changes. Some are a little bit, maybe not as much change on one course as another, but with the woods, the white pines, the pines, but it's really serene, very quiet, like you said, and it's a lot of fun. At Garland, the Log Cabin Lodge stands as the foundation for what is truly a great vacation spot 
with a variety of different accommodations. New ownership recently took over this active destination with a revived care for all of their guests. There's so much to do. It's a beautiful place. It's 3,000 acres of God's land. And it's just, it's, it's quiet, it's peaceful, serenity. We have trails where you can hike, you can bike, golf. I mean, there's just a lot to do. And it's very, very peaceful. Pretty pure, I must say, and there are plenty of price breaks available at courses and resorts throughout the whole state of Michigan these days. Up next on the Chicago District Golfer Tee, some refreshing instruction with Carl Robito, and we'll see who's crowned champion at the Illinois Open. Stay with us. Up to 32 miles per gallon, chances are you'll need refueling before it will. The BMW 5 Series, the ultimate driving machine. The Lesson T is brought to you by the Bolingbrook Golf Club. Today we're going to talk about the fairway bunker shot. A lot of people have trouble with this shot, but most of the time it's self-induced. So I see a lot of time People get in a bunker, they really bury their feet. That's the worst thing you can maybe do because it locks your ankles. You do not want to keep your legs still in a bunker shot. If we've got 180 yards, I mean, you've got to make 180 yards worth of swing. So you still have to have your mobility. The best thing you can do in a bunker is make your regular swing. If you're going to do anything, barely lift your chin a little higher than normal. It's real simple. If your right shoulder drops, you're gonna catch the sand first and we've got a terrible shot. So if you're keeping your head still or down, there's a great chance for your right shoulder to go under. We've gotta get the right shoulder to replace the left. You've gotta get your weight forward so that we can compress the ball, catch the ball first. So an easy way to make sure this happens is just artificially, once you take your regular setup, just barely lift your chin a little higher than normal this is going to allow your right shoulder to get forward more easy and make your regular swing. If you do that, I promise you, your fairway bunker shots will be better. State Supremacy is on the line at the 62nd Annual Illinois Open Championship from Hawthorne Woods Country Club, and there was plenty of drama in the final round. Mike Smalls, the story at the beginning of the week, the University of Illinois golf coach and part-time PGA Tour players hoping to tie the mark of five Illinois Open titles. I didn't play well enough. I just didn't hit it good enough. I didn't putt well enough. And, uh, you know, I've been struggling coming into this event anyway. And uh, I shoot a lot of scores around par. You know, hard courses, easy courses, hard days, easy days. I just shoot right around par. I'm just not getting a lot out of my game. And that's kind of what I did this week. A little history is made by 15-year-old Doug Gim of Arlington Heights. He's the youngest player to ever make the cut in the state's championship. I learned a lot about um, making calculations and these guys really know how to golf their ball. Um, they put in a lot of factors that I've never even thought of, so that was really cool. Recent Northwestern University grad Robbie Patel took home low amateur honors, posting rounds of 72, 70, and 68. Today I was, I knew I was hitting it well, and I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to try and like push for too much and just go play my own game, and do what I've been doing, and just stay patient, and it, and it paid off. So that, that felt really good. To, to finish like that and I birdied 17 18 coming in too. The players all got off to a late start in the final round thanks to heavy rains and lightning in the morning. The damp weather actually made the Hawthorne Woods course play a little bit easier as the competitors were able to go pin seeking on the soft greens. It came down to a three horse race with Philip Aroca leading by four shots over Bennett Blakeman and five over Michael Schachter. It became a two-man race by hole 12, with Shackner and Aroka tied at nine under par. Aroka regrouped, though, and by the 17th hole, his lead was back to three. Again, Shackner applied the pressure, sticking his second shot on the par five hole nice and tight, leaving him a four-foot putt for eagle. 
Aroka needed to make this short birdie putt to give him a commanding lead heading to the final hole. Instead, it lipped out and he'd have to settle for par. Shackner's eagle putt, which he drained, meant the Libertyville residents just won back with one to play. All players hit good drives on 18, but Shackner aggressively went for the pin with his approach and pulled it into the hazard next to the green with the ball landing on top of a rock. It would have been some story if he'd been able to pull off that tricky shot, but he could not. And he finished with a disappointing double bogey. Well, golf, golf is all about experience and, and gaining experience. And, um, you know, whether it's this or a nationwide tour event or PGA tour event, you know, being in the last group, feeling the pressure of, you know, the possibility of winning a golf tournament. Just just being there and experiencing that and whether you win or lose, you can learn something from it. With all that drama unfolding before him, Aroka's two putt par was all that's needed to claim the trophy and a three stroke victory in the 62nd annual Illinois Open Championship. It's the biggest tournament I've won. Um, I've won some smaller events uh, throughout the summer a little bit, but you know, to, to beat a field with uh, some really quality opponents. This is, this is definitely the biggest one of my, my career so far. The Rule Book is presented by the Bose Creek Country Club in Elgin, Illinois. While taking a couple of practice swings before hitting his tee shot, Jamie accidentally knocks the ball off the tee. He looks at his playing partner, Steve, and quickly says it's an accident, so he's just going to re-tee the ball without penalty. Steve says, I don't think so. Doesn't matter if you meant to hit the ball or not. You did, and now you have to play it. Who's right here? We'll be back with the correct ruling after this break. 1-0. Bring your game, son. Chase this. 2 nothing. Come on. I'll swing left-handed. One-handed. Brutal. Woohoo! Partner, I am waxing you. Please, give me one. Oh. Jeez. All right, I've seen enough. At least got to give you a chance. Try this. It's a new Wilson Staff DI-11. Just hit it. You'll get it. Welcome back to the Rule Book, brought to you by Bose Creek Country Club. Jamie accidentally hit his ball off the tee while taking a practice swing. Can he reload without taking a penalty, or must he play the ball where it now lies? Somewhat surprisingly, there is no infraction. In Decisions on the Rules of Golf, Decision 18-2A-19 states, the accidental striking of a ball does not constitute a stroke under the definition of a stroke. More importantly, since the ball was on the tee, it was never in play. Hence, the player incurred no penalty under Rule 18-2A, and the player can re-tee without penalty. However, if Jamie accidentally hit his ball after it was in play, say his approach shot or a putt, he would be in breach of the rules. There's a bonanza of choices in golf equipment these days, and you can always go online into magazines to get the latest reviews, but there's nothing quite like seeing, feeling, and testing them. Let's go to Club Champion to check out the hot irons for 2011. One of the industry leaders is Callaway Golf. Its clubs are known for being easy to hit and more forgiving. Callaway has a wide variety of irons for every skill level. Uh, they start with a blade uh, for your better golfer who wants to work the ball more, it's forged. Then they go into their Eck Razor X Forged, which is a cavity back forged iron. Um, then they go into their cast products, which are going to be your Razor X Tour, which is going to have more of your middle handicapper. It's going to be for the little bit better player that wants workability, but also forgiveness. And then they go into more of their game improvement and higher handicapper with their Razor X and Diablo Edge. Mizuno's always had the reputation of producing irons for the low handicap player. Now it's also making irons for players of any skill level. They start with their JPX 800, which is their bread and butter for the year. This club is for your middle to low handicapper. It has forgiveness, but yet flies off the face. Lots of ball speed, lots of feel. Going down the line from there, it's still all forged. It's gonna have your cleanest feel. Um, and they talk about it in their advertising and your cleanest looks. 
So everything from their MP63, which is gonna be more of a solid cavity back, to their 53, which is a hybrid set, where your long irons are gonna have a cavity, to your short irons are gonna be a smaller cavity, to all the way to your blade, which is a full set of blades. Giving everybody on the market a chance to hit a Mizuno iron. Taylor made golf's been known for years as the number one driver in golf, but now it's irons are finding a groove in the market. TaylorMade has had a breakout year in the iron industry. They've had five different irons on the market this year, starting with their Burner 2.0, which is their hottest selling iron. It's probably the hottest iron on the market as far as ball speed. Um, it's a very, very good seller for the middle, high, and low handicapper. Then they go into a new offering for 2011, which is four forged irons. They've only had one forged iron probably in the past six years in their lineup, which has always been a blade. This year, they not only have a blade, but they also have what they call the MC, which is a middle cavity. It's more of a compact forged cavity. And then they have their CB, which is more of a bigger oversized cavity back, but still has that forged feel for the player that would like that. Forged irons have a softer face. Cast irons have a firmer feel. You have to try them both to see which one's best for you. Precision's the name of the game these days. Almost everyone wants to know their exact yardage like the tour pros. You can do that now. The question is, GPS device or rangefinder? The Business of Golf is brought to you by MB Financial Bank. We posed that question to a number of golfers and got their opinions as to the pros and cons of each. I think it's really a six of one, half a dozen the other. Uh, the benefit of the Sky Caddy is you have the graphics, so you can really see the layout of the hole uh, as it's laying out in front of you. There's no hidden bunkers, there's no hidden ponds, nothing like that. You get the picture of the entire hole, uh, whereas the laser finder, you have to be able to see the object in order to get the yardage to it. I, I thought I liked the laser better, but um, when you're out there, I think the GPS is just easier. There's less time. You grab it, you look at it. There's not as much fumbling around, and I think that you don't want to spend too much time. You're trying to think about the next shot and pick your club. You just want to get the distance and keep moving. The pro on lasers, you can shoot anything you want. You can find uh, a tree, a, a bridge, anything, and shoot it, but harder, harder from farther away. Uh, when you're way out, 200, 250 yards, that's when it gets difficult to uh, line it up and get an accurate reading. If you find you're a bit shaky on some days, here are some tricks of the trade. I tend to use people on the green, you know, a big guy with a big XL shirt on, and yeah, and that works a little bit better than uh, trying to get the flag. Uh, the Sky Ks are great uh, for measuring distances that are already predetermined, but if something's not on that sheet or not on that on that uh, on that screen, it's kind of hard to get those. So I think I, I think the bush now just gives guys more freedom, more uh, you know, more options to, to to shoot different distances. And if you're not sold on one or the other, there's a Bushnell hybrid which gives you the best of both worlds. It's safe to say the days of walking off the yardage from the sprinkler head are long gone. Coming up, we'll have the inspirational story of the Sunshine Through Golf Foundation. It'll brighten your outlook on the game. Aren't you tired of buying clubs that don't improve your game? At Club Champion, we fit tour players, top amateurs, and golfers of all skill levels who are serious about hitting more fairways and greens and sinking more putts. In your session, our certified fitters will have you test equipment from all leading companies using state-of-the-art technology to find the perfect setup for you. We then build each club to your specs and deliver to you in a timely fashion. Schedule your fitting today at Club Champion to get the edge you need because a better fit means lower scores. Welcome back to Chicago District Golfer TV. You know, the CDGA is more than just handicap indexes and tournaments. It has a charitable arm devoted to bringing joy to people with special needs through golf. A trip to the Sunshine Course shows you what the Sunshine Through Golf Foundation's all about. Welcome to the Sunshine Course in Lamont, just across the street from Cog Hill, where it's about giving folks the ability to play golf no matter what their disability. One look at these specially equipped golf carts and you know you're someplace truly extraordinary. And we bring kids out here that have all physical disabilities, from visually impaired to spinal cord to amputees to whatever the physical dis disability may be. 
and it's a great way of getting the kids to come out and enjoy the game that so many people absolutely love. We're going to go back, and that's exactly how we're going to swing right here. Oh, look how beautiful that is. You played golf before. It was built in 2004, and it's fully handicap accessible, meaning golf carts can drive onto the green. We can have wheelchairs on the green, crutches. That's what it's here for. Individuals or groups with special needs are the only ones who can play this par three course, and it's free. The foundation was created in 1944 as a way of helping veterans coming back from World War II. Its focus now is assisting junior golfers with special needs. These kids are able to do exactly what other kids that do not have a physical um, need. and. Um, They've got special needs, but we want them to be able to come out here, not have anybody pushing them on the golf course, and be able to try golf. There might be three kids out here that go home and tell their parents they want to go play again, and that's the point of the Sunshine Course. That's it, though. It's a good swing right there. That, that's it right there. And the crowd moves out of the way. <laughs> good job. Okay. Patrick Byrne from the Rehab Institute of Chicago is a perfect example for the young kids. He didn't take up the game until after he lost his leg. He thought his dad was crazy to suggest it at the time, but now he's grateful he did. And one thing that I want these kids to realize, no matter what the disability is, you can do whatever you want. And even for me to stand on one leg, and so many people say to me, how can you hit a golf ball on one leg? I, I just stand there and I hit it. To me, do how do I do it? I just keep my balance and I hope for the best every time and it, sometimes it works out good for me. But um, I want these kids to know out here that, that I'm having fun. If they see me that I'm having fun, I'm hoping that I can just push that towards them. Some of these kids can only hit the ball a few inches. Others can hit it better than I can. To focus on that though is missing the point of the Sunshine Through Golf Foundation. It's that they're out here trying to hit it and smiling all the way. And that's a good lesson for all of us. It really does put things in perspective, especially uh, when you're out on a golf course and you're struggling and you're, you're having a tough time hitting the ball. You come out here and you see these kids having a good time. They hit the ball maybe two feet, big smile on their faces, and they're having the time of their lives. It really does put everything into perspective. And that's what so many of us have to remember out there. No matter if you hit the ball five inches, you hit the ball 50 to 100 or whatever the situation is, have fun doing it. And that's exactly the great thing about being around these kids that bring that fun part back. If you'd like to get involved with the Sunshine Through Golf programs, just go to our website at cdga.org. It's a great organization that helps so many people with special needs. That'll do it for the show. I'm Jill Carlson. Thanks so much to our great hosts here at the Highlands of Elgin Golf Course. Hello? Yes. A meteor. Oh. No, I'll take care of it. Oh, two of them? Uh, how far away? Okay. I'll get it done. Experience Bolingbrook Golf Club, an 18-hole championship layout designed by acclaimed architect Arthur Hills. Golf Week Magazine has nationally recognized Bolingbrook as one of the best courses you can play. The 76,000 square foot clubhouse features outstanding dining, superior banquet facilities, and all of the comforts of a private club. Plus, there's also the Bolingbrook Golf Academy with renowned instructor Carl Rubito and a state-of-the-art practice center. Call Bolingbrook Golf Club today for your next big event or tea time.